Did the ATF, in a couple quick sentences, make every pistol-gripped shotgun now an NFA item as well? Seems like they're throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks. And I want to give you a little bit more news, a little update on the 88-day thing. I want to correct something I said in the way I said it. And uh, before I jump into that, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that's We The People Holsters. We The People Holsters are manufactured here in the United States of America in Las Vegas, Nevada, and they carry hundreds of holster options for use with or without a belt. They carry all kinds of accessories as well for your everyday carry needs, and they have a ton of availability when it comes to makes and models. Check them out, the link will be down below. Thanks to We The People Holsters for sponsoring this video. All right, I'm gonna start off with a, uh, I wanna address the 88 day video that I did uh, at SHOT Show with GOA that has gotten some, some pushback, and I understand why, and uh, part of, uh, part of it was the way I said some stuff. I got a little excited, uh, but the fact remains that the information was good. And if you want to stay and see the proof that I was talking about, because some people were uh, writing back to me saying that the 88-day uh, denial does not apply to Form 1s and Form 4s, and it actually does, and this letter is proof of that, because this person got jammed up on that. It's rare, but it does happen, and I'll talk about that if, uh, if you want to hear that at the end of this but this video the main crux is the pistol grip shotguns some people have shock waves shock waves have been cool and copacetic all along they were not nfa items however i'm going to show you this section here in this final rule on the pistol braces that appears to make everything that was previously okay now an nfa item to include the shotguns as well now because we've been uncovering all kinds of things from them them, the ATF saying that you can no longer shoot somebody else's NFA item, to all the other stuff that's been coming out, uh, starting to redig into this and to study literally every section instead of before I just read the damn thing, right? And I want to show you the section. I want you to tell me what you think it says, and uh, we'll go from there. So this is on page 22 of the final rule, and we're going to start where it starts about the shotguns here. It says also in 2014. An individual asked ATF to examine the SB-15 stabilizing brace on a firearm commonly known as a pistol grip firearm with a smooth bore to verify that the firearm is not regulated under the NFA. On October 28 of 2014, ATF concluded, one, that a forward grip, an additional hand grip toward the front of the firearm in addition to the pistol grip, attached to a pistol redesigns that firearm to be fired with two hands and therefore the firearm is no longer a handgun or pistol. Now for these uh, pistol grip shotguns, that's the uh, the foreign, right? The, the part you use to either uh, pump or stabilize said shotgun depending on what it is. And I believe all of the shockwaves are pump shotguns. I could be wrong, but this is talking about that second grip on that firearm specifically. Number two, that it would be classified as any other weapon pursuant to 26 U.S.C. 5845E under the NFA if its overall length is less than 26 inches or if it's actually concealed on the person. The overall length of the submitted firearm was 27 and a quarter inches and therefore ATF determined that as submitted, the firearm was subject to regulation under the Gun Control Act but was not an NFA firearm. Provided the SIGTAC SB-15 pistol stabilizing brace is is used as originally designated and not used as a shoulder stock. In essence, ATF's original analysis focused on whether the inclusion of the forward grip subjected the firearm to the NFA, but ATF did not consider how the classification would be affected if the pistol grip firearm without a forward grip were to incorporate a stabilizing brace. Nevertheless, the addition of a stabilizing brace to these types of firearms does not assist with one-handed firing, but rather redesigns the firearm by providing surface area for firing from the shoulder. Therefore, these types of firearms would fall within the purview of the NFA as short barrel shotguns, 26 USC 5845 Delta. Because these types of firearms were never designed to be fired from one hand, this rule as described in the Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, does not apply to firearms commonly referred to as pistol grip shotguns. The 2014 classification described above and any classification that provides that a pistol grip shotgun is not an NFA firearm is no longer valid or authoritative as of the date that they published this in the Federal Register 
and the firearm should be resubmitted to Fat D for evaluation. So to me, reading that plain text says that any pistol grip smooth board firearm, commonly referred to as shotguns, uh, they have that second grip, that's two-handed uh, firing, that is a short barrel shotgun, and if it has a stabilizing brace on it, it doesn't assist in one-handed firing. So they're saying that these pistol grip shotguns now are NFA items, and any uh, letter of determination saying they were good to go is no longer authoritative and has been rescinded. Now I'm also gonna show you the footnotes and where they address this too, and you'd think they have them together, but they don't, and it's actually footnote number 73, and I'm gonna show you that here. Now the footnote is on page 47, and uh, footnote 73 says, as mentioned above, any classification that provides that a pistol grip shotgun is not an NFA firearm is no longer valid or authoritative and should be resubmitted to Fat D for reevaluation. So my question here is if they weren't going to change the designation, say, no, no, it's good to go. Why would they need you to submit that for another reevaluation? Why wouldn't they just say they're, they're fine to go or good to go? Well, my guess, knowing the ATF, I don't trust the ATF. I don't know if any of you trust the ATF, but I don't trust the ATF. I don't want to give them an inch. I don't want to, I don't think that they're looking out for our, our, you know, looking out for us in any of this. This is a gun grab. This is a way for them to, uh, to piss on our territory, right? Um, so they're saying that, you know, if you, you think it's not an NFA item, resubmit that and we'll let you know. Which gives them the opportunity to give another classification saying, nope, sorry, it's an NFA. Now, what do you think about all this? I don't trust the ATF, not one inch. I know they watch the channel and I don't care. I think that this is saying that every pistol grip uh, or every pistol grip shotgun is now an NFA item, just like anything that has a pistol stabilizing brace, uh, like an AR and AK pistol. Those are all SBRs according to the ATF now. Uh, and I wanted to bring this to you because we saw this last night and we were like, wait, wait a second. Does this actually say what it says? Now let's talk about the 88 day thing. I, I, got, a, I got a lot of pushback and I understand why. Um, I did say it was a trap. I do think it's a trap. Um, and before I jump into what I wanna say about it, I think that we, we need to start acting the same way that the anti-gunners do when uh, there is a constitutional carry bill uh, submitted, right? Poke holes in it so that you can defeat it at all costs. If this is a hole that we can use to defeat this, maybe even not get it uh, posted in the register, then we should do that. And that's why I brought it to you when, it, when the ATF themselves said that if the 88 day um, denial does happen, they would take enforcement action. Let me address that. I did say, uh, I got excited and I annotated on the screen and I understand a lot of people didn't read it. Um, the 88 day window does not start the second that you submit your, your form, form one or form four or whatever. It starts when an agent actually opens your background check, begins your background check. If it stays open for 88 days, on the 88th day, if it still remains open, then it's an automatic denial. And I know that it doesn't happen a lot, maybe one or 2% of people because they have some issues in their background, right? I get that. My point was, and I didn't say it, I didn't verbalize it correctly. I didn't uh, say it the right way. And I understand why people maybe jumped over or got excited the way I said it. And I understand that, that's my fault. But my point is, is if they expect, they, the, the ATF expect 10 to 40 million transactions to be, to be logged in in a 120 day window of which that system's closed down one day a week, then the potential for this to happen at a higher rate is definitely there. And if the ATF themselves said, on the 88th day, the denial will, you know, one, the denial is kicked in by the system. The human doesn't do it, it's automatic. Then we'll take enforcement action. I do believe that that is something to pay attention to. It is, now, are they gonna come kick your door in storm, stormtrooper wise? Probably not, there's not enough of them. And thank God we have states that are Second Amendment sanctuary and sec, uh, 2A sanctuary counties, and this is actually gonna really test them. But that is an, an area that does exist. And the background, the, uh, the 88 days does apply to all of NICS, not just the 4473. Let me read you this uh, 88 day denial so that you'll understand where I'm coming from. Now this is issued by the ATF and the identifying information for this person has been redacted to protect them, obviously. 
And it says, this letter responds to your recent submission on an ATF Form 4 application for tax, paid transfer, and registration of a firearm. Specifically, you are listed as a transferee on the ATF Form 4 and therefore seek possession of a National Firearms Act silencer, blah, blah, blah. And then it goes into the laws. The Gun Control Act, the GCA of 18 U.S.C. 922 G. George, prohibits certain persons from shipping, transporting, possessing, or receiving firearms. These are known collectively as prohibited persons. The NFA, 26 U.S.C. 5812, requires that an application to transfer NFA firearms shall be denied if the transferer, receipt, or possession of the firearm would place a transferee in violation of the law. This includes any transfers to individuals who are prohibited from possessing firearms pursuant to 18 U.S.C. 922G or any state law. Because ATF is prohibited from approving any transfer to a prohibited person, the NFA implementing regulations require that in addition to any other records checks that may be conducted to determine whether the transfer receipt or possession of a firearm would place the transferee in violation of the law, the director shall contact the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, NICS. The National Instant Criminal Background Check System was created by Section 103 of the Brady Handgun Violence Prevention Act of 1993, commonly referred to as the Brady Act. NICS is a name check system that queries available records in the National Crime Information Center, otherwise called NCIC, uh, the Interstate Identification Index, otherwise called III, and the NICS Index to determine if prospective firearm purchasers are disqualified from receiving or possessing firearms, so explaining the background check system. The Federal Bureau of Investigation is responsible for operating NICS. Pursuant to the requirement of the Brady Act, the FBI has published implementing regulations regarding the operation of NICS 28 Code of Federal Regulations, Part 25, Subpart A. These regulations permit NICS to respond to inquiries by ATF in connection with a civil or criminal law enforcement activity relating to the Gun Control Act of 1968 or the National Firearms Act. Here's the section I want everybody to just pay attention to. Your NFA application has been disapproved by ATF based on the FBI reporting a final status of open on the required background check after 88 days and have not received information back on the final disposition of potentially prohibiting information. One avenue to receive information relative to information in one's background, the FBI can provide individuals with an identity history summary, often referred to as a criminal history record or a rap sheet, listing certain information taken from fingerprint submissions kept by the FBI and related to arrests, and in some instances, federal employment, naturalization, or military service. The FBI offers a method for requesting a copy of your identity history summary or proof that one does not exist. Your NTN is blank. For additional information regarding the FBI's identity history summary check, please visit this website below, and please be advised that it is the responsibility of the individual to resolve any background check related issues with the respective courts arresting agency or other state agency contributing firearms related information to the NICS. The NFA division will not be able to assist you in resolving any issues regarding the open background check. Upon resolution and correction of source records, you may resubmit a new NFA application and it's respectfully submitted by branch chief of the NFA industry processing branch, Amy uh, Stelly. So I wanted to show you that because A, uh, the 88 days applies to everything that goes through NICS, including the Form 1s, and in this case, Form 4. Uh, the 88 day thing is real. It doesn't happen a lot, but mind you, we put 10 to 40 million transactions into the system, the possibility of that goes higher, and that is a violation of somebody's rights. This process is a violation of our Second Amendment rights, right? Uh, that's my point. We should be pulling together, not looking to, to poke holes in what everybody else is saying, I'm not correct 100% of the time, and nobody else is either, but this fact remains. The 88-day denial is a thing that the system can create, and this could cause somebody to not have their right to the item that they've had legally and lawfully all along, that the ATF has decided because Joe Biden's pushing this because of the pressure of his anti-gun uh, supporters that we have to go through this now, that they're going to change the classification. So... We should be doing more together. We should be uh, unifying as a as a as an industry and includes all of the makers and manufacturers because this is, this is where we push back, guys. Maybe it's just me. I think we should all be working together, getting information out so that the people who are right now preparing uh, lawsuits have everything in here. Uh, from, from the short-barreled shotgun issue that, that is here to what came out yesterday about them uh, reclassifying whether you can shoot somebody else's NFA item or not. And that, that literally, that decision could take businesses out, out of business, like machine gun ranges that rent stuff. It could take industry events. 
gone could change the industry overnight. Those are big things and they should all be part of the lawsuit. So let's bring this information forward. Let's share it. And if you want more information on this and anything else related to the Second Amendment, whether it's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, then like the video and share the video. And I look forward to having you here for the next one here on Guns and Gadgets. Guys and gals, be safe, stay vigilant, and carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe. I'll see you all on the next one. Take care.